hello Philippines and hello Tagum City. It's another episode full of learning and fun here in School on Air. I am your teacher on air, Teacher Carol, and together with me is Teacher Dana. Yes, hello Teacher Carol, and I am truly grateful and glad because I am back here in our Salida Teleradio and live here in 98.3 Gold FM Kuyawano. Maong maayong hapon sa ato mga solid na mga kaastig and at your service po, Teacher Dana. Ug syempre, Teacher Dana. Before ta magsugod, ato sang timbayaon ang mga taong nagpaluyo aning school on air. Let's start with our ever supportive principal, Dr. Jeffrey C. Villarosa, and to the rest of our working team, the teachers in LFNHS. And of course, this school on air will not be possible without the help and guidance of our school's division superintendent, Dr. Josephine Padul, and the rest of the officials in DepEd Tagum City Division. Hello po, ma'am and sirs! Sakto jud gadiha, ma'am Dana. Before we proceed, I would like to inform everyone that we can also be heard in La Filipina National High School official Facebook page. Yes, Ma'am Carol, that's mm -hmm. true. So, akong ginaawag ang tanang mga estudyante na maminaw o maayos sa atong school on air karong hapuna, aron makakuha sila o mga bagong kaalam. Wow, that sounds exciting, Teacher Dana. Maong dili na nato padugayon pa. During the previous broadcast, we discussed what a lead is and the composition of standard lead. We will explore another content about special program for journalism today. So, kawai kawai sa ating mga students jan under SPJ. Hello. Yes, and our lesson this afternoon focuses on SPJ, but still, pwede ka ayu and siran sa atong ubang mga isujante, ma'am Carol. Right. So, for this session, we will learn more about the different ethical uh, ethical principles of journalism. Mm -hmm, that's right. But before we proceed to a new lesson, let's have a short recap about what we had last time, Teacher Dana. Yes, that's right. Uh, last time, Mom Carol, we talked about mm -hmm. the different types of novelty leads. That's right. Can you still remember the five novelty leads we discussed, students? Let's check your memory, mga kaastig. Okay, now, can you still remember, Ma'am Carol, what are the five different novelty leads? Oh, there were four novelty ah, four. leads that we discussed mm -hmm. last time. Uh, actually, we have a lot of them, but we only have four last time mm -hmm. due to time constraints. Now, those four are, shall we reveal it now? Yes, of course. First, we have the very common one, the list lead, followed by the scenic lead, and then the storytelling lead, and finally, we had the punch lead. Okay. Those are the four, Teacher Dana. Yes, and you can also review your previous notes, mga kaasti, mm -hmm. about, the no about the meaning of those novelty leads. Uh, and of course, please prepare your notebooks as well for today's session so that you can take note of the different principles of ethical journalism as our new topic this afternoon. That's right. Now, later on, our students will be prompted to accomplish tasks and activities that will widen their knowledge and skills as campus journalists, especially in the ethical principles that journalists should practice. Okay, and since you are expected to produce a well-written journalistic articles in the future, we hope that you will answer it with honesty and diligence. So to start with, let us first present our lesson objectives, Mom Carol. Okay, first is to identify the five principles of ethical journalism. And second is to evaluate newspaper articles and ethical dilemmas or scenarios based on ethical standards. Okay, so are you ready, mga kaastig? Okay, very good. I think you are all ready. Now that you know the things that we're expected to achieve in this lesson, let us get started. Before we proceed to the discussion, let's have an activity first. We will play two news clips and you will answer some questions after. Again, we will play two news clips and you will answer some questions right after each news clip. Are you ready? That's great! 
Here is the first news clip. Negatibo sa weapons of mass destruction ng North Korean cargo ship na nakadpad sa Subic Bay. Resulta yan ng mga inisyal na inspeksyon ng Philippine Coast Guard. Ayon kay spokesman Commander Armand Balilo, hindi pa matukoy ang dahilan ng pagkakapadpad doon ng North Korean ship na inimpound o hindi napapayagang maglayag sa visa ng UN Security Council Resolution. Okay, let's listen to it again. Negatibo sa weapons of mass destruction ng North Korean cargo ship na napadpad sa Subic Bay. Resulta yan ng mga inisyal na inspeksyon ng Philippine Coast Guard. Ayon kay spokesman Commander Armand Balilo, hindi pa matukoy ang dahilan ng pagkakapadpad doon ng North Korean ship na inimpound o hindi napapayagang maglayag sa visa ng UN Security Council Resolution. That's it. Now what have you observed to the first news clip? Answer the following questions with just yes or no. Okay, let's find out. First question. Did the reporter mention the title and the name of its source? Number two. Did the source of the images were cited? Number three. Did the specific location was given as to where the North Korean cargo ship was found? Number four. Did the reporter clearly pointed the lacking information about the ship that got in Subic? And number five. Is it a good or incorrect manner? of presenting a news and why now let's check whether your observations are similar to ours but before that let's hear the news clip once more teacher dana okay let's hear it once again negatibo sa weapons of mass destruction ng north korean cargo ship na napadpad sa subic bay Resulta yan ng mga inisyal na inspeksyon ng Philippine Coast Guard. Ayon kay spokesman Commander Armand Balilo, hindi pa matukoy ang dahilan ng pagkakapadpad doon ng North Korean ship na inimpound o hindi napapayagang maglayag sa visa ng UN Security Council Resolution. Okay, let's check your answer. Let's, uh, let's have again the questions. First one, did the reporter mention the title and the name of its source? Yes, that's right. The reporter mentioned the source. It mentioned where the news came from and it's from the Philippine Coast Guards. Okay, so How galing pala number sa Philippine two, Coast yes. Guards ang balita. Number two, did the source or are the sources of the images cited? Answer? It's yes. It was cited, the reporter said that the images were given by spokesperson commander Arman Balilog of Philippine Coast Guard. Okay. So, nakaspecify kung sino talaga yung source niya. Yes, that's correct. And the third question, is there a location given as to where the North Korean cargo ship was found? May location ba tayo doon, Ate Ka uh, Teacher Carol? Yes, may location tayo doon. It was found in... Subic Bay. Okay, very good. How about number four? Um, did the reporter clearly point the lacking information about how the ship got in Subic? Yes, na yes yon. The reporter said that it is still uncertain of how the Korean cargo ship arrived in Subic Bay. So it was clarified kung ano yung kulang na information. Mm. And finally, the last question. Okay, the last question. Is it a good or in incorrect manner of presenting a news and why so base sa mga sagot natin hmm. kanina sa observations most all of the answers are yes so definitely it's a good way of presenting a news because information were given mm -hmm. by legitimate sources like interviews and pictures okay very good i think they have the same observations uh, teacher Carol. I do hope. All right. Okay. So, 
That's only the first news clip, mga kaastig. Let's try to listen and observe the second news clip. Ibig din namang nagtapos ang prayer march sa Maynila na yan. Pero bago nagwakas, sari-sari muna eksena ang nasaksiyan sa pagitan ng mga pulis at mga ralista. At live mula sa Mendiola, Maynila, saksi si Michael Fahate. Igan pasado las 8 ng tahimik na mag-disperse ang mga ralista sa San Sebastian. Ngunit matapos ang ilang negasyon, ito ay matapos na nag-disperse sila. Pagkatapos ito, uh, hindi na sila nag-away. Nag-away sa sila simula. Pagkatapos ito ay nagkaroon sila ng uh, pag-aaway na sa simula. Let's play it again, Teacher Dana, para maka-observe talaga sila ng maigi sa news clip. Ibig din namang nagtapos ang prayer march sa Maynila na yan, pero bago nagwakas, sari-sari muna eksena ang nasaksiyan sa pagitan ng mga pulis at mga ralista. At live mula sa Mendiola, Maynila, saksi si Michael Fahate. Igan pasado las 8 ng tahimik na mag-disperse ang mga ralista sa San Sebastian. Ngunit matapos ang ilang negasyon, ito ay matapos na nag-disperse sila. Pagkatapos ito, uh, hindi na sila... Nag-away. Nag-away sa sila simula. Pagkatapos ito ay nagkaroon sila ng uh, pag-aaway na sa simula. Okay, so that was the second news clip. Now, can you uh, differentiate the first and the second one? Mm -hmm. Well, let's try to answer some questions. Okay. okay. First question. Uh, is it a good or an incorrect manner of presenting news? And why? Mm -hmm. Let's give them thinking time. Okay, and ha um, number two, if you were the reporter, what should you do to present the news better? Okay. Dalawang questions lang yan for the second news clip, mga mm -hmm. ka So, what are your observations, uh, Teacher Carol? Do you think it is a good or incorrect manner of presenting news? If we're going to base to, we're going to compare it to the first news clip that we played a while ago, ang laki ng diferensya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Anong napansin natin, um, Teacher Carol? Mm -hmm. How about the audience? Napansin kaya nila mm -hmm. yun? Sige, the answer is, no, it's not a good way of presenting a news. It's even an incorrect manner of presenting news because there was no enough information given. Mm -hmm. And then, paulit-ulit lang yung sinasabi ng reporter. Kulang na nga ng information, paulit-ulit pa. So, mukhang ang reporter mismo nalilito sa kanyang gustong ipahiwatig sa mga viewers. Yes, that is right, Ate, mm -hmm. uh, Teacher Carol. So, uh, he sounds very confusing yes. sa pag-deliver niya ng kanyang balita. Okay. And uh, since you said that, Ate, uh, Teacher Carol, if you were the reporter, what should you do to present the news better? What do you think? If I were the reporter... I would really research ahead mm -hmm. of time. Yes. But for the audience, if they were the reporter, what would they really do? Would they research the information? Or would they would they still do the same as what the reporter mm -hmm. did? Well, so, the right um, thing to do is really to research yes, ahead of time. Yes, exactly. And after you research the information, after you check it, you also need to rehearse. That's right. Okay, mag-rehearse talaga sa pag -de deliver ng balita, Teacher Carol. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, it's researching the information at the same time, rehearsing what you research. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Now, those are good ideas and glimpse of our topic this afternoon, Teacher Dana. I do hope that they have the same observation mm -hmm. as ours and... Now, the reporter on the first video or first news clip delivered the correct information with cited sources compared to the second one. And then the first reporter obviously practices ethical form of journalism while the second one is not. Okay, that's right, uh, Teacher Carol. In delivering news stories, we should not deliver the general information. Mm -hmm. Rather, we should be keen and specific and provide evidences of the new stories we will deliver to the readers or to the listeners. That is one of the ethical practices of journalism. That is correct, Teacher Dana. You mentioned about ethical practices of journalism. For today's lesson, we will focus on knowing the five 
those are just five ethical principles that are very common in journalism that every journalist should know and those who aspire to be one should also know. Yes, yeah, so uh, wag na nating uh, paghintayin ang ating mga kaasti. Let's try to find out what are those five ethical uh, practices or principles of journalism. Right. So the first one is, or the first principle is truth and accuracy. Mm -hmm. Now what is truth and accuracy, Teacher Carol? Now, truth and accuracy is considered as the cardinal principle of journalism. So, dapat hindi natin yung kalimutan. Because all the information about the news should be correct. So, dapat tama at saktong-sakto, walang pagkakamali. We should make sure that we check the information if it is legitimate, including its source. Yes. Dapat tama ang informasyon at galing sa tamang pinanggagalingan ng balita. That's right. Okay. So, now, Teacher Carol, can, uh, where can we get or how do we uh, find out if it is coming from a legitimate source? Okay, as future reporters, future journalists, itong mga viewers natin, mm -hmm. as much as possible, we should get the information through a personal interview mm -hmm. sa mga legitimate sources din ha mm -hmm. di yung mga nasa tabi-tabi lang mm -hmm. kung sino-sino na lang kinukuha now direct words from the persons involved in the news is a good way to practice truthfulness and accuracy in the news just like in our first news clip the reporter interviewed the police officer who handles the case of the illegal cargo mm -hmm. galing mismo sa nag-imbestiga ang impormasyon, kaya ito ay nagpapakita ng truth and accuracy sa pagbabalita. Yes, that's correct, Teacher Carol. Unlike the second news clip na walang impormasyon that's right. at uh, wala rin sinabi kung saan galing ang balita, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, first one is, uh, the first one really uh, describe or depicts the truthfulness and accuracy in news delivery compared that's to right. the second one. Yes, yes. Okay, now let's try to go to the second principle, mm -hmm. which is What's that? independence. Yes, now what do you mean by independence in journalism, teacher Dan? When you say independence, journalists must be independent voices. Mm -hmm. So we should not act formally or informally on behalf of special interest, whether political, corporal, or cultural. That's right. Mm -hmm. Kumbaga, hindi tayo dapat maging kinatawan ng anumang political party or organization na maaaring makahadlang sa ating pagbabalita. The tendency kasi, Teacher Dana, mm -hmm. if reporters are part of political party or organization, it will create conflict of interest or bias in news delivery in the future. In case a reporter has political affiliations, it would be best to declare it to the news editor or to the audience. Mm, I see. So, ganyan palang ibig sabihin ng independence mm -hmm. in journalism. Dapat walang, uh, hindi ka parte ng anumang political organization or yes, party. Right. I see. So, I hope students, you remember the first two principles in ethical journalism. Again, the first one is truth, truth and accuracy. And the second one is independence. That's right. Now, the third principle is fairness and impartiality. What does it mean, Teacher Carol? Most stories have at least two sides. Mm -hmm. Two sides, yon, just like a coin. Mm -hmm. The reporter should always present every side of the story to make it balanced. Yes, tama, Teacher Carol. Hindi sapat na ang balita ay nanggaling lamang sa isang tao or isang organisasyon. We should interview or get the information from all the important persons involved. Yes. Para sa walang pinapanigang pagbabalita, mm -hmm. dapat may iba't ibang anggulo ang balita na iyong ibibigay. That's right. So don't forget to present the two sides of the news that you'll be delivering or reporting. Mm -hmm. Now, the fourth principle of ethical journalism is humanity. Humanity. Anong ibig sabihin nun, Teacher Carol? With the root word human. Human. So, dapat mm -hmm. magpakatao ka oh. sa pagbabalita. So, ano ba yun? Yun? Humanity in ethical journalism means that journalists 
should always be aware that images or stories might be hurtful to some people. Responsible journalists should consider the impact of their words to people. Sa madaling salita, ang isang tagapagbalita ay huwag gagamit ng mga salita na maaaring makasakit or kumut siya sa katauhan ng isang tao o grupo ng mga tao. Yes, that is right, Teacher Carol. Now, we are now on the last principle of ethical journalism. But before mm-hmm. that, let's try to review the, the four first. Uh, first one, truth and accuracy. That's right. Number two, independence. Number three, fairness and impartiality. Four. The fourth one is humanity. Humanity. And the last one is the fifth one is accountability. What's the meaning of accountability, teacher? Then okay, a sure sign of professionalism and responsible journalism is the ability to hold ourselves accountable. So that means na uh, when we commit errors, we must correct them. Again, That's when we right. commit errors, we must correct them. And our expressions of regret must be sincere. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Tama. dapat nasa sorry ka, sincere ka. Kasi uh, hindi naman sa lahat ng uh, instances ay tama ang na-research mo. So, meron talagang instances, Teacher Carol, na mali ang naibibigay mong balita. That's right. And you have to be sincere in asking an apology. Yes, Wag that's yung correct. plastikan. Yes. Just like in real life. Exactly. <laughs> so, ask for apology and don't forget to correct the information. Mm-hmm. So, we may not change the readers, uh, uh, we may not change what readers write or say about it, but we will always provide remedies when we are unfair. Tama. May mga pagkakataon talaga na maaaring maging mali ang balita. At kung ito man ay mangyari, dapat ang isang tagapagpamahayag ay hindi humi- handang humingi ng patawad sa mga mambabasa at tagapakinig. At itama ang maling informasyon na kanilang nasabi. Again, exactly. dapat handang mag-ask ng apology. Okay? Mm-hmm. And correct it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, Teacher Carol, we just completed the f- in the we just completed defining the five principles That's of right. ethical journalism, which are first we have truthfulness and accuracy. Correct. Number two, independence. Number Third three, one, fairness and impartiality. Mm-hmm. Four. Num- number four is humanity. And finally, we have accountability. The last one. Okay. Now, let us have a short recall of the definitions, Teacher Dana, through an activity. Okay, let's try to recall. Mm. I hope you uh, uh, take note of the information or the definition earlier, mga kaastig. Mm-hmm. Alright, so uh, the activity is, you will have to identify the principles of ethical journalism that each scenario describes. Um, write whether it describes truth and accuracy, independence, fairness and impartiality, humanity, and accountability. And we will right. give you five seconds to answer. We will read each item twice afterwards. Let's find out kung tama ba yung sagot niyo. Okay, are you ready mga kastig? I believe you are all ready. Teacher Carol? Number one. Information should be verified before releasing them. Again, number one, information should be verified before releasing them. Okay, the correct answer is... Very good! You're correct. You got it right if your answer is truth and accuracy. That's right. Number two. As much as possible, present both sides of the stories. Again, number two, as much as possible, present both sides of the stories. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. What's the answer? If your answer is fairness and impartiality, then you get it right, mga kaastig. Okay, number three, 
Treating sources and subjects as human beings deserve as human beings deserving of respect. Again, treating sources and subjects as human beings deserving of respect. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, from the root word, meron tayong clue doon, di ba? Yes, Carol? that's right. The human root word, being. human. Okay. okay. Answer that's is? The answer. Very good. Humanity. That's right. Number four, giving public apology if the news given is wrong. Giving public apology if the news given is wrong. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, if your answer is very good, accountability, then you got it right, Ma Astig. Accountability. Right. Aside from asking an apology, they also have to correct yes. that information. Exactly. Number five, refuse gifts and other favors that may influence the coverage. Again, number five, refuse gifts and other favors that may influence the coverage. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the correct answer is independence. Okay. That's right. Para hindi maapektuhan yung mga pinagbabalita nila, okay. wag dapat sila talagang tumanggap. Okay. Number six, speed should not be an excuse for inaccurate information. Number six, Speed should not be an excuse for inaccurate information. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is truth and accuracy. That's right. Okay, so dapat uh, you uh, you a lot. Uh, you a lot of big time talaga in researching and finding mm -hmm. the correct uh, information. information for the news. That's okay. right. Number seven, cite the source of the news. Again, cite the source of the news. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the correct answer is... Mm, Truth and accuracy still. Yes, that's right. So, never forget to cite your sources mm -hmm. para mapakita yung credibility exactly. ng inyong balita. Okay. Number eight, acknowledge mistakes and correct them promptly. Again, acknowledge mistakes and correct them promptly. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. What's the correct answer? It's accountability, of course. Alright, mm -hmm. accountability. So, andito na yung correcting. Yes, correcting the wrong information. Mm. So, kanina, asking an apology lang. Exactly. Ngayon, nandito na rin yung correcting. Number nine, find the subjects of news coverage to allow them to respond to criticism or allegations of wrongdoing. Again, Find the subjects of news coverage to allow them to respond to criticism or allegations of wrongdoing. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, anong sagyat natin dyan, Teacher Carol? You have to find your subject. Okay, hanapin mo yung um, other side of the story. Yes. Okay. The correct answer is fairness and impartiality. That's right. So you have to be fair. Again, present both sides of the story. And last but not the least item, consider the safety of your source or subject. Again, consider the safety of your source or subject. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so anong sagot natin, uh, Teacher Carol? Since you're going to consider the safety of your subject, mm -hmm. that's being... Nagpapakatao ka. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is humanity. Alright, very good. How's your score, students? I believe most of you got a passing score of 7 to 10 points. 
good job for those who pass. And for those who got six and below, you still have time to review your notes or your module on the five principles of ethical journalism. Don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, now students, let us try to test your knowledge through a short quiz. So this is now our assessment part. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we are done reviewing the five principles of ethical journalism, you will now have to identify whether the following uh, scenario is ethical and unethical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, write ethical if the scenario shows that the journalist follows one of the principles of ethical journalism. And unethical if it is not. We will still give you five seconds to write your answer. So, this is a uh, uh, somehow lengthy scenario, mga kaastik. So, you really have to listen and mm -hmm. analyze the scenario. If you are the uh, journalist in the scenario, okay? okay? We will read each item or the scenario twice para may oras kayong mag-isip kung ethical ba or unethical yung mga practices ng bawat journalist per item. Okay. So, let's start. Yes, of course. Number one, Jason is shooting for a documentary news and he gathers facts through interviews and readings. He always double-check the information by finding other sources to avoid errors. He also makes sure that the names and direct quotes of the people he interview are correct. Again, Jason is shooting for a documentary news and he gathers facts through interviews and readings. He always double check the information by finding other sources to avoid errors. He also makes sure that the names and direct quotes of the people he interviews are correct. Your five seconds starts now. Five, four, three, two, and one. Time's up. Okay. The correct answer is ethical. Okay. Ethical and ethical talaga Yes, yun. that's correct. Because based on Jason's practices, he follows the principle of ethical journalism, which is truth and accuracy because he keeps on mm -hmm. verifying kung tama ba talaga yung mga information and quotes as well as names na include niya. Yes, that's correct. Alright, so okay, I hope you got two. it right, mga kastig. Now, let's try to listen to the second say, scenario. Ready? Michael, a black American journalist, had a bad experience with Australians during his childhood. Mm -hmm. He was asked to write a documentary of Australian culture and think this is a great opportunity to take revenge of his bad experiences with them. He described the people as snobbish and used disrespectful words anonymously in his article. Again, Michael a black American journalist had a bad experience with Australians during his childhood. He was asked to write a documentary of Australian culture and think this is a great opportunity to take revenge of his bad experiences with them. Now, he described the people as snobbish and used disrespectful words anonymously in his article. Ang sad naman ang experience na yun. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, five ano seconds. Kayo? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, what is the answer, Teacher Carol? Do you think it's ethical or unethical? This is scenario. He's making revenge. Yes. Obviously, it's... It's unethical. unethical. Okay. So... Um, M Michael, based on his action, is biased and subjective in writing his new story. Um, he used disrespectful words that defy the principle of ethical journalism, which is humanity. humanity. So it's a big no-no to disrespect other culture 
regardless of their race, yes. age, gender. Even if may negative experience ka dati Exactly. Sa All right. Okay, number three. Arthur being tasked to report about the conflict between the two senators went to the press conference set by each party and asked relevant questions to clarify some information. Again, Arthur being tasked to report about the conflict between the two senators went to the press conference set by each party and asked relevant questions to clarify some information. Your five seconds starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Mm -hmm. What do you think, teacher Dan? I think it's a good practice, teacher Carol. So I think it's uh, ethical. Yes, because based on Arthur's practices, he follows the principle of ethical journalism, which is fairness and impartiality because he always get the two sides of the news mm -hmm. all right very good arthur now let's have the fourth scene Richie was called by one of the senators in tv accusing him of his impartiality Richie was proven to be biased in one of his news reports but he decided not to do a public apology. Again, Richie was called out by one of the senators in TV, accusing him of his impartiality. Richie was proven to be biased in one of his news reports, but he decided not to do a public apology. Your five seconds starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, correct answer is, of course, unethical. 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 Dahil naging bias siya, di Yes. Ba? And not only that, um, based on his action, he, um, based on his action, he is not being accountable of, his, yes. of the mistakes he did. Mm -hmm. So, if in case, uh, in this case, he refused to follow accountability as one of the principles of ethical journalism. Yes, that's it. And the last but not the least item, number five, Mark was offered by a confidential senator to report only the good sides of his political agenda in exchange for a possible political position and cash. J Mark refused and continued to do his news report. Again, Mark was offered by a confidential senator to report only the good sides of his political agenda in exchange for a possible political position and cash. Mark refused and continued to do his news report. Your five seconds starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. The correct answer is he refused the gifts. Of the he, he refused the cash and political position. Grabe siya, no? <laughs> Grabe yung principle niya yes. sa buhay. The correct answer is it's ethical. Ethical. Because based on Mark's practices, he follows the principle of ethical journalism, which is independence. Because he refused to be affiliated with political figures and organization. Uh, so, tinanggihan niya yung pera at political uh, position ibibigay sa kanya. Bihira ng mga taong ganun. Yes, exactly. And mm -hmm. I hope our journalists will always, or our future journalists will always remember those five principles of ethical journalism. That's right. You should always follow those principles. Diba, Teacher Carol? Of course. Again, those are the five basic ethical principles of ethical journalism and we hope that you'll not just practice it in your journey in journalism but in real life scenarios too. Yes, exactly. Because because those principles are not only for the journalist teacher Carol, diba? we can also apply this in our daily uh, in our daily our day to day actions. Yeah. Our um day to day uh, dealings. 
uh, yes, dealings as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, that's it, mga kastig. We just finished another SDJ lesson focusing on the five ethical principles of journalism. And I hope that you take note of the information of the information and you learn something new today. That's right. But before we end this segment, allow us to greet our colleagues, especially the English Department of La Filipina National High School, headed by Sir Harley Aglosolos. And to my ever supportive husband, John Mar, my family, and to everyone who are tuning up. Uh, who are tuning in up until the end of this segment. Thank you so much and have a great day. Yes, and we would like also to thank Salida Teleradio for having us today. Of course. Uh, so, uh, and uh, those who are listening as well to Gold FM 98.3, Kuya Wano. So, just to continue listening to the radio station and watch us on a Facebook Live. So that uh, you will learn something new, um, even though nakakulong tayo uh, during this pandemic, di ba? That's Teacher right. Tayo? Okay. Now, thank you everyone, especially to all students who answered and participated during our activities today. And we hope to hear from you soon in our next segment here in School on Air and Salida Teleradio. Yes. Once again... This has been your teacher, Calero. And this has been your teacher, Dana, saying, Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. See you, See next, you next time. time. Bye bye.